You're a little subdued. Yeah. Um, tell me why. You were, what is you were waving <laughs> the blue and white pom poms, man. Dang. Um, you were, you were blue really and green, into I it. think, is the official colors. Oh, I'm not sure. They change all the time. Last <laughs> know, night they I wore know. gray, right? Yes. But I think it's uh, it's an interesting trade, obviously, for Dallas, who have the organization has a history of dealing with international European players. They're the only team in NBA history that's had a European player be there, the best player in the franchise history. You know, MVP, Finals MVP, won a championship there. So they 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 have that kind of infrastructure in place. Now you have Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, who is coming off a knee surgery and hasn't played yet. I think. He got hurt last February 6th, it was, hasn't played since, hasn't played NBA games since. But I like the trade for Dallas and for the Knicks are opening up cap space. The Knicks must think, as crazy as it may sound, that they're getting maybe Kevin Durant this summer. Why they, this is all about cap space for the Knicks. Yeah, Frank Asola here on the Will Kane Show. I think that's what both teams are telling us, actually, because the Mavs yeah. had to do something to build around Luka Doncic. And what they're clearly saying is, Porzingis is better than our options in free agency. And the Knicks are saying the opposite. Our options in free agency are better than building around Porzingis. So how realistic do you think it is that they're going to be able to bring in one, perhaps two, because they freed up now two max cap slots with this deal. Yeah, and we know who's available. It's going to be Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving. I think the Knicks, and there's been a lot of talk around the league, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, maybe going to Brooklyn. Now I think it'll be Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. You could throw the Knicks into the mix as well. Kyrie Irving maybe going to L.A. to play with LeBron if Anthony Davis shows up there. So it's never a sure thing because the players in today's NBA, they change their mind all the time. And, Will, you have to admit, after what's gone on in the league really the last few years, Kevin Durant leaving Oklahoma City, go to Golden State, Paul George staying in Oklahoma City, all the different kind of moves that have gone on, Kyrie Irving asking out of Cleveland when they were still a title contender. You can't say that you'd be surprised at this point at anything that happens, whether it's Kyrie Irving and Durant playing in New York, playing in Brooklyn, Kyrie Irving going to play with LeBron in L.A. It, as crazy as it may have sounded two months ago, you can kind of see a scenario where it could potentially happen. Yeah, and it still is New York, so you might as well make that possibility yeah. exist for your franchise. Um, you brought up the knee injury to Porzingis. How big a concern is that? Well, you don't know until he gets back out there. And, you know, he is a guy, when you look at his body, that's a freakish body. That's seven foot. Uh, what is he, seven three. three? And, you know, long limbs. And he has had injury concerns before. Hopefully this is something that he can come back from because when he does play, A, he has an incredible work ethic. He's got unique talent. He wants to win. And I think he's been very frustrated in New York. Remember when he blew up that exit meeting with Phil Jackson and Steve Mills? That was over two years ago. So to me, the owner of the Knicks, Jim Dolan, you know that they were all ticked off about that. I think for him to be willing to do that, that, to me, was going to be the beginning of the end for Chris Porzingis. I never thought that he was going to be a long-term Nick. Now, that I think it was going to be over by now, no. But that kind of set, you know, he kind of drew a line in the sand back then. And here we are less than two years later, and he's gone. But you said, oh, by the way, he's a restricted free agent this yeah, yeah, summer. Yeah. Do you think this comes with the implication he'll re-sign with oh, Dallas? absolutely, absolutely. They've already had the conversation. I, I'm, I'm sure that that conversation has happened. And remember... Here's a guy who has been compared to Dirk Nowitzki. Now, he's not going to get to play long-term with Dirk Nowitzki. Who knows? They may never play this season if Kristaps doesn't come back, and we all think that Dirk will retire. But he's going into a situation where he'll spend a couple of months there with Dirk. Doncic, he knows. It's just the perfect – I think for him, it's the perfect organization. You know the Spurs were interested in him. The Spurs, long-time history with international players. I think the Thunder and Sam Presti could have made something like this work. I think for Kristaps Porzingis – it's an ideal situation. Forget about what happened in the Maverick organization on the other side with the, you know, the sexual harassment stuff and mm -hmm. all this nonsense on the business side. When it comes to a basketball operation, when you're talking Donnie Nelson, Rick Carlisle is the coach, and I get it, they've had some lean years here now, but that is a pretty solid organization with a pretty good track record of drafting, developing players, and winning in the Western Conference, which isn't easy to do. You know what's funny, Frank, last night you were at the game, I was at the game, Mavs, Knicks last night. You spoke to Dirk, you talked about it. Um, the, I was up, I was up, you know, where the regular press is, not where the, you know, the big timers where, like you are. Where the, where the lowly press is. Yeah, That's right. the real lowly press, right, as right. I like to say at the game. I was talking to Howard Beck of the Bleach Report, and I was just theorizing, I was like, hey, all these guys, you know, joining up together to create super teams, how long will it keep happening in the future? But I did say... Do you think international guys will ever gravitate That's... towards each other? And he said, I think within teams, they do, socially. Yeah, yeah. But creating teams together from various franchises, could you see international guys? I was thinking Giannis at the time. Yeah. I really wasn't thinking about Porzingis and Doncic. Do you see that as like a – could that be a thing? Like, clearly it's a thing 
not orchestrated by the players, but that's a thing in Dallas now. But you see a thing where international players want to play together. I, I think there's a chance that that could happen. Remember this, you know, Tim Duncan from the Virgin Islands stayed in San Antonio his whole career. Same thing with Manu Ginobili. Now, Tony Parker wanted to stay in San Antonio. They're the ones that moved him out. When you hear about Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's a different kind of guy. When players called him up over the summer to come work out, he didn't want to do that. Right. I'm working out with the guys on my team. And you don't hear about him having an entourage or a camp that now is the big thing. And he seems to be very happy in Milwaukee. They hired a great coach. They're committed to winning the ownership group there. So maybe the international players, and look at Dirk. How long has he been in Dallas now? Oh, it's forever. It's 20 years. Right? He got drafted in 98. 99. Yeah. Think about this, and I've said this all the time. When you think about the top franchise players in the history of the league, let's go the last 30 years. Guys that stayed with one organization, won at a high level, and then towards the tail end of their career were willing to take less money to kind of keep it going. Kobe was different. Kobe got every penny, and they gave him a ridiculous contract, which hurt the Lakers. Tim Duncan was willing to do that, Dirk Nowitzki, and they kind of, you know— transitioned into that lesser role for lesser money so they could stay on the team and that the team could try to stay competitive by using that other salary cap money. And it just so happens that they're both international players. Frank Isola here on the Will Kane Show. I'm out, almost, I want to ask you one last question. Um, I got out here and I was joking around with you and Tony Rialli and Pablo Torre, and who's a Knicks fan. He said, look, man, I said, Dennis Smith Jr. is nice. He, I mean, yeah. he's got something. And he goes, look, when we heard Porzingis as Knicks fans was traded, I'm thinking Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Now I hear you. You understand the rationale, the free up the cap space. But in the end, is this a good deal for the Knicks or a bad deal? I, I, I think we're going to know in July whether or not it is. The Knicks must know something or believe that they know something, one or the other. Because now for Steve Mills and Scott Perry, they're under a lot of pressure. Because you're trading away a guy that you drafted that had potential. But the one out they're going to have is he's, we don't know about his health. Porzingis' you know, health. Exactly. Yeah.